We're here at Whetstone Station in the brewery on a snowy January morning with James and Connor. And we're going to brew some beer today, I think. That's right. So I'm looking over your shoulder. Yep. Tell me what you're doing here. Um, we're designing a recipe right now. So our goal is to have different styles in rotation at all times. Okay. okay. And uh, currently we have um, a Dunkelweizen coming out of the bright tank. We have, which one do we have? We have a Pilsner and Fermented 2, and then we have um, an Amber, American Amber Ale and Fermented 1. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. For the so where do the recipes come from? Do right, you have them? Right here, Jerry. Okay. So we're, I'm just designing a recipe right now. Well, this is not, oh yeah, here we go. I was going to say I can't pick it up, but now I can. All right. So we have our base malt. This is a pretty common program for... Um, it's a brewery program, or did you guys make it up? Uh, no, we didn't make it up. You can, you can get this online. All right. Um, so... So you know, even the brewing process is computerized, right? You know, you can do all these calculations with a pencil and pen, oh, or right. pencil and paper, but um, it just helps to have it all in one place. Exactly. So, based on our, our previous recipes, we often tweak things to see how we like them. doing now? You're climbing up to grab a bag of something. Yeah, I'm grabbing the malt I need to make this beer. Alright. So, we'll need this to so grow us barley. Alright. We'll need we'll need victory malt, which is a British aromatic malt. So that comes off the recipe that you were looking at the computer screen. Yep. Yeah. All right. Certain malts give certain flavors depending on what you're looking for. Watch out, here it comes. All right, I'm going to move out. It won't be the first time I got hit. All right, I'm going to turn it off. And you never get to see it when it's dark like this. use like part of it? Uh, yeah, depending on the recipe. Right. You know, grains like this, like roast barley, are highly kilned and a bit dark. So if you use too much, you can uh, ruin the taste All of the beer. All right. But just enough and you get the flavor you're looking for. Wow. Yeah. I can show you what those look like in a second. All right. Here, that <laughs> when you pour in, let's say, uh, the malt and you start to brew, you can almost taste what the beer is going to taste like before you actually brew it because you have so much so much experience doing it. Yeah, right? because we've made the recipes so many times, you know. We, yeah. we, we're always changing the recipes, but when, we're, when we formulate a new one, we go back to the previous recipe and ah. alter it slightly. Okay. Yeah. And you can do that on the computer mm -hmm. so that you know each time you made one and altered it, you have a record of what's going on, right? Yep. And the okay. computer, computer does all the math for us. Oh, yeah, all right. So we don't have to, only have to do the math once just to teach the computer how to do I'm it. I'm not a math person, so that computer would be my friend. Oh, yeah, it's nice <laughs> to have. So like what are you doing to this thing here now? What do you... Well, this, is, uh, this is what's called a work grant. And it's called a what? A work grant. All right. And we're going to use this before our pump to alleviate pressure on the bottom of the mash tons, which is where we're going to mix the grain and the water together. Where's this located now? This is the mash. These are the mash tons right here. Oh, all right. So we're going to mix our grain and our water together in here. And start our start conversion sugar. 
All right, I see steam coming out, so there, you must have had some heat on here. Yep, we're filling them up with hot water right now. All right. On demand hot water in here. Uh, so okay. Just fill them up hot. That's cool. Get the temperature right, add the grain. And then this thing is in place of our, uh, before our pump in the, in our recirculation line. So this thing will gravity feed from the mash tons. All right. And then the pump will draw off this rather than off of the bottom of the mash uh, tons. All right, yeah. So, like, the bottom of the mash tons, does it get, like, there's malt and stuff at the bottom, which you don't want. So, like, this takes some of the clear stuff off. Is that? Mm -hmm. So the bottom of the mash tons, we could actually get you up there, maybe, and you can look inside. But the bottom of the mash tons have what are called false bottoms. Yeah. So there's a screen that runs... You know, so it's right above this bottom port here. Oh, all right. And it, and it holds away, everything. Covers right. the whole bottom, so the grain will fall down on top of the false right. bottom. And then below it, in theory, you have all clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. That makes sense. Yeah. And then we're gravity feeding that work off the bottom here, and it comes down and fills this guy up. All right. And then the pump draws off the bottom of this. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then where do you pump it? Like into kegs, or how does oh, that work? It pumps. It pumps. It'll pump out of here. It'll come back across yeah. over our flow meter, and it'll come back up on top of the of the mash tons. So the first step is to add the grain and the water. Oh, so you add more ingredients and keep doing it over again. No, you add the you add all the grain at once. Yeah. So we're gonna add all the grain to the mash tons after right. after we have the right amount of water in there, and then we're gonna use our pump to pull all of that clean wort off the bottom, the right. bottom of the okay. mash tons. We're going to pull it all down through our grant and back up on top. All right. Okay. So we're going to recirculate the wort through our grain bed. And what will happen is the grain will all settle in there and it will make a nice bed and it will basically create a filter. And so we'll be, ah. you know, we'll be recirculating the wort around off the bottom, back onto the top. We'll do that for about half hour, 45 minutes. Reaching in a bag here. What are you doing here? I'm getting the uh, rice hulls out. So these are rice hulls. All right. This is going to help us keep our grain bed nice and loose. So All right. we get good, good circulation through the All entire right. grain bed together. And so we add a little bit of this to each one of our mash tons just to help with uh, help with the flow okay. through the grain bed. Biscuity and um, All right. like. I didn't have the camera on. Just say that again. What's in this bag? This is Crystal 120. All right. It's a it's a crystallized malt. It's um, essentially crystallized sugar All right. in malt form. And this is uh, 120, which is the highest rating of color. One of the higher ratings of color. So that adds flavor and color to the adds beer. Adds flavor. And you, can, and you can eat it for breakfast too. You can right? eat all this stuff. <laughs> Maybe it's not you know great for your digestion, but you can eat it. Yeah. Well, I would be if I was opening those bags every day. I know what James does here. Yeah. Because I have his business card, and it's very professional. <laughs> but now I know you help. What What is your title? Because I'm going to put it on here when we do the video. I don't know. James and I don't really do titles. All right. But we both make the beer here. All right. Yeah, my card says brewer and so does his. All yeah. right. All right, well, I, I don't like titles either, but yeah. it's like you guys are working here and like you're pretty good partners and I just wondered. Yeah. So I'm just going to put Connor and I'm going to put James and... Uh, you can just say we're both that, head brewers. All right, that'll... Okay. How about that? All right. We're partners. All right. Co-brewers. Co-brewers. Like Co-brewers, I like yeah. that. I like that. Okay. All right. over here and I see some kind of a board 
Connor said it's a schedule. This is like your brewing schedule? Yeah, for the month. We try and plan our brew days weekly and then have major events um, on the calendar to, to make sure we can fit everything in. What's a major event? Like I'm uh, doing a beer training next Thursday morning. I'm going to be out of town next Wednesday. Uh, all right. So we'll brew either all Monday, right. Tuesday, all or right. Friday. Um, you know, there's other deadlines we have to meet, like we're, we're shipping beers to a competition in Colorado. We have to get them packaged All right. by That's Monday. Cool. All right. That's kind of a cool rake. So what are we doing here? We're mashing in. So this is called a mash when you add barley and water together. Right. So we're adding... This is about 165 degrees. I or, just grabbed the pipe over here. It was pretty hot. Yeah, careful. This uh, is all yeah. pretty hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can smell it now. So we're going to do this. When I was in college, talking about college, whoop, here we go. I went to school in Tampa, Florida, and they had the Anheuser Busch Brewery there. And we used to go on a tour on Friday and it would, it would smell like this and oh, yeah. just like this. So what are we putting in here now? Put it in our base mall. So this is our two row barley. Okay. Malted barley. So why are you spraying everything down here? Um, I'm spraying off the caustic solution which is on the tank. It helps us clean up all the organic matter in the tank. Excuse me. All right, so what's this process? You have some beer in here. Yep, that we've, been, we've been doing our uh, our mash here for about half an hour. So right. what I did is I collected a little bit of the wort right. that we've been recirculating and checked for clarity. We have pretty clean product here. Right. Now we're going to check and see how much sugar is in it. So I grabbed a little bit of this, put it on our refractometer, close this guy down. And then look through it into the light, and you can see how much sugar we have, which is a lot. I wonder if you could, you think we could? Yeah, just aim it that way. You think we could? Yeah, I mean, look through here. Oh, wait. Hold on. I don't know. Is oh, wait, I see something. Wait, not yet. Yeah, there it is. Wait. Wait a minute, is it still going? Wait. Yeah. Oh, it'll have to be perfect. Yeah, I don't think it'll. Yeah. Work. Well, if, okay. Right. The bartender runs out of beer, and then what yeah, happens? They're gonna come back here, and take a right. little walk. All right. Now we're coming through the kitchen. Oops. Excuse me. Oh, slippery. Wow. We got a lot of work going on before people even get here, huh? All right, so we're... Now we're at the back of the kitchen, and you're standing by some kind of a door that looks like it's going to be cold out there. Oh yeah, it's our walk-in cooler. So. All right. Whoa, look at that. That's where we keep our text beer. All right. I'm just going to sneak a peek in here. Oh, it is cold. All right, so, and this is the, what is it? The, um, it's our keg room. And what is this pressure stuff here? It's not propane. Nope, it's a uh, carbon dioxide. A carbon dioxide. Yeah. So when someone comes back here to tap a keg, what do, how do they know which one? They kind of just know from... Yep. Their so, experience? Yeah, the way it works is out on the floor, there's a, uh, you know, they've got 13 taps downstairs. Oh my god, look taps. at this. I didn't see this. So, uh, what we do is, holy crow, it's all taps, you know, one on this side, 14 on that side. So when tap seven kicks out there, they go tap seven. And then it falls the line. So they know by so, the number out there, they can 
tell by the number in here from the number out there. Yep. All right. So when keg kicks, they just pop the coupler off. So on. that's a keg right there, the this green leaf. It's a log, actually. This is a five-gallon keg, so it's it looks small. One sixth of a barrel. All right. A normal keg like this guy yeah. is a half barrel. So this yeah. is fifteen and a half gallons. Half of thirty-one gallon barrel. That's incredible. Yep. And this all goes out to the bar. Yep. There are these two main trunk lines here, and then on this side, all huh. these lines go upstairs to the. The beer garden. Yep. Wow. So this is all closed down right now. As you can yeah. see, it's all filled with water. Nothing going on up there. So we're just using this side for storage now. And all of our downstairs taps are right here. This is pretty cool. Yeah. This is unbelievable. And when you come in with Nancy, she'll explain to you right. more in depth about how like this stuff works. So this stuff prevents us from filling our beer line since we have such a long draw, you know, since uh, we're, yeah. we're 200 feet away from the bar yeah. right now. So what happens is when a keg kicks, you get gas comes up through this hose, right? Yeah. And then it comes up into this guy yeah. and it'll fill this with gas. So this ball falls down and it uh. plugs the hole, which is the which is so that that means that this side stays completely filled with beer it's all the way safety, out to the tap. Yeah, yeah. So you don't end up with foam and air all on your line. So when the cat take uh, the keg kicks, yeah. they take this coupler off and they put it on the water, and then they push water out. So water pushes the beer that's stuck in the beer line. Yeah, it pushes it all out to the floor. So they know when they're when they get water out there that. This line is done and they can tap the next keg. That's cool. All right. Well, I'm starting to freeze. Like this. Yeah, let's get out of here, Jay. All right. James and Connor. All right. Thanks Gary. for inviting me in here today. Yeah. Yeah, give me a big smile. Get close to each other. <laughs> you guys for work down pretty here. hard. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, all right. Thanks a lot. And, uh, yeah. We'll tell you when this goes on the website and then when it goes on Channel 8. Awesome. All right. Thanks yeah, a lot. Bye. It was really good. Yeah. All right. Care, take Gary. care. Bye-bye. Yeah.